Hey, everybody, it's me. I'm back. Check out this episode. We're going to break down the AFC East. We're put, put on the sewer boots because this one's tough for fantasy football, but we have a good time and we highlight some values. Remember to subscribe. Remember to click that bell, get those notifications, and stay tuned. The time is coming swiftly. The middle rounds are now close to the unskilled. Yet here you are. Unprepared, you fools. This season you will find all kinds of foes eager to watch your draft crumble with wasted picks. There can only be one ultimate draft kit. Only one that can bend them to its will. And it does not share power. You must wield the UDK and send your opponents back to the shadows. You shall not pass on this chance to send your league mates into the deep. Fly, you fools, to ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome back. Oh, it's good to be back. Tuesday, July 13th. The band is back together. Uh, no more bear. Fantasy Tan Man is here. Oh, I like it. You are looking rather tan. A very, very nice color on you. I know a lot of times uh, people who maybe come to Arizona, mm-hmm. maybe see us in person. Yes. Um, stay tuned. Uh, they say, why, why, why don't you have a tan? You're in Arizona. You you're so much sun. You're ghastly. <laughs> yeah. We burn here. But where you were, you tan. Yes. And you look great. Well, you're really breaking down the whole illusion that I had been building all week. We had been, we had told most people. I don't know if you listened to the show. No, um, but <laughs> Goodness, we no. <laughs> you were on vacation, but I had been spreading, you know, rumors, rumors. that you were barefoot backpacking through. I jungle. believe we went through the Himalayas. It was well, it was a jungle that I believe was on the top of mountains. You can you can tan up there. You're so close to the sun, right? Because of the distance. Yeah. <laughs> scientifically proven. The best tanning is up on Everest. That's I have heard that. Why else would you climb it? That's a good point. It's for a sweet tan. <laughs> and then you zip line down and it's fine. Uh, welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. Mike is, in fact, back in action. We are on episode three of our divisional breakdown show. So a jam-packed episode. There is so much to cover when we do these very important divisional breakdown episodes, uh, we've we've handled the AFC South and the AFC North, and today we'll be in the AFC East. We got some mailbag if we have time for it, some news to get into. I do have an announcement. <laughs> so, okay, all the horns, all the horns of the world. This is a big announcement. I heard that horn a lot on Everest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have a live show. We're back, baby. Wait, We're in back. In person? Yes, we do. We have a live show. It is the only live show of 2021. We did not. Do, that does make it the best. Do a big tour this year, but we will be live in Phoenix. Here's the details. Uh, Saturday, August 28th. So right before the kickoff to the 2021 season. The show will be at 7 p.m. We are once again very proud to partner with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Uh, $10 of every ticket sold will go directly to St. Jude and uh, support their mission of finding cures and saving children. And you can get tickets at ballerslive.com. So uh, there will be limited tickets available. You can come and join us in person for a live episode. It's always a lot of fun. I'm so excited. I mean, yes. we, you know, we, we we took obviously everyone took last year off from uh, traveling and doing live uh, life, uh, live life with others. But it's going to be so nice to have that one show. So if you're anywhere nearby, we're excited to see you have you out. Those shows are always a blast. It's fun to be in the crowd. It's fun to uh, be in. A, it's basically a rock show. 
Well, Jake Grizz yes. is going to be there. That's true. Brooks is going to be there. Yeah, so you might just randomly get a million dollars while you're at the show. If it, Brooks is feeling generous. Yeah. He's not usually, but it's possible. He carries millions of dollars. He on just, him. Yeah. He just, <laughs> cash. This is cash. <laughs> just look for the man with the briefcases. That's him. And then if you find um, someone that you're like, I didn't know they were, you know, letting him in, yeah. uh, that, that would be Al Borland. Um, so they'll be usually next to each other. Yeah, and the Borgogan will be there. Kyle will be there. Matthew oh, Betts yeah. will be there. It's going to be a party. The biggest loser will be there. So if you want to see us live, see the Ballers live, where do you go? Ballerslive.com. <laughs> oh, what a domain. <laughs> Seems like a good place to go. It's really good. All right. You uh, you can follow us on YouTube, youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers. Subscribe. Click that link. The website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Uh, people have been enjoying the draft analyzer, which is part of the ultimate draft kit. You know, we're almost into August. Drafts are going to start happening fast and furiously. And you can evaluate your team, get a grade from us, get an action plan, prepare yourself for the season. We always say stay water, right? And so you've got your draft and your baseline and your team, and you probably think your team's great, but we're, we're going to give you an objective view of your, your team and some weaknesses that you might have heading into the year. Hopefully that can buy you a few extra wins, get you in the playoffs, and get you that championship. You can check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. All right, news time. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. We'll get a live reaction from Al Borland on this piece of news. Aaron Rodgers said Saturday that he'll figure things out in a couple of weeks when asked by NBC <laughs> about his plans for the season. Uh, so a couple of weeks, huh? He's going to figure it out. Oh, that actually sounds promising to me. I'd like to know before August. I mean, him saying a couple of weeks that there's going to, that you're going to figure it out, that is insinuating that there is an answer, that there is a conclusion. Well, uh, because there has to be. Well, right, but a couple, of, I mean, otherwise you just retire when kickoff happens. Like, it, it's, it, would you rather it be a couple of weeks or would you rather it be just kickoff? But how long is a couple weeks? Two weeks. <laughs> like, a couple of weeks could be. The that Aaron Rodgers shows up at, after training camp is done. He's like, "Yeah, I'm going to start for the Packers now." I mean, you think that's still the most likely case? Maybe. I, it's just a a little bit of a tug of war going on right now. What? Where are your odds? Let me hear them. July twelfth. <sighs> Aaron, Aaron Rodgers back. Mine are far more on Aaron Rodgers being back. Um, I think as time has gone on, as more stuff has been reported, more of the contract stuff coming out, I, I do think he'll be back and play with for the a Green new contract. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll probably take some kind of extra little money. <laughs> extra I still, little, I still extra think little he's, cash. You know, um, not a long term. E even if they extend him, I expect that he'll be gone. In really, the, yeah. Yeah, because they drafted Jordan Love. That that is their future. They don't want Aaron Rodgers to play for them for the next five years. They want to transition to Jordan Love. I believe that. Yeah, but that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, if you're Aaron, how do you extend him and then you're saying he's going to be gone? That's not going to work. You can't unless you're talking about a one year little boosted single single year deal. Yeah, because if you extend him with a multi year deal, then you're just creating a cap disaster for yourself when you eventually do try to trade him or or move on to Jordan Love. I think if this is pivotal of if you extend Aaron Rodgers, he's your guy. You bet You're talking about the MVP of football. Yes, he's yeah, your yeah. guy. You bet incorrectly that Aaron Rodgers would not be your starting quarterback in 3 years and you just eat it. And in Jordan Love, you trade him on like the last year of his deal, kind of like uh it, it's it's not as as insane, but Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, right. they they spent a second round pick on him, which is like I said, that's not crazy for a backup quarterback. That's the the path that's more likely to me if you extend Aaron Rodgers. But as far as him being back with the Packers, I mean, it. I guess I'm. I've been under fifty percent, and I, I'll say I've moved closer to the fifty percent that he is back. So slightly trending in yeah. The, in did, the, you, did you guys talk at all about the 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 golf game with him and Brady and just no. all the, all the all the razzing like Tom Brady it looked is, entertaining. 
Tom Brady has gone into full troll I love mode, it. which I is, love it. is spectacular. And to Aaron Rodgers' credit, I felt that he just – he just was no problem. It was just water off of his back. It just was like, what? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, there. I'm, I'm, I'm figuring things out. A couple weeks, maybe I'm there. Maybe I'm not. Green Bay. Well, I think Brady has so many things going for him in this equation. Where obviously you could say, hey, you've got all those championships. You can just troll everybody. But I think it's also funny because he just broke free, right? He broke free from the Patriots, right? And Belichick and that organization. He is, and then he can kind of look at Aaron and go, "You're where I was, sucker. Yeah, See you like, later." I I go to the beach every day. How's it up there in uh, Snowsville? Yeah, uh, someone pointed it out the other day. How, and and I don't remember who tweeted it, or I'd give you credit, but someone was just saying, you know, Gronk came out of retirement to go hang out on the beach, catch two touchdowns in the Super Bowl, and win another ring. Like that ain't bad. Life's all right. Saquon Barkley declined to answer on the Rich Eisen show whether he would be ready for week one. Essentially, yeah. he said he's taking his recovery day by day. There is a new article up on the website from Matthew Betts, our injury expert, talking about the Saquon injury. The expectation and the timeline is still that he will be there for week yeah. one, um, but it was a significant knee injury in the timeline. Even though it was early, the surgery had to be delayed. So if he gets off to a slow start, um, I don't think people will be shocked, but you'll be disappointed. The article was specifically about Saquon and Joe Burrow. Saquon had the ACL, MCL, and meniscus. Burrow had those three and then threw in the PCL as a little bonus. Oh, yeah. Uh, and if you're so, going to do something, do it yeah, all the way. Yeah, that's, that's a champion injury. Yeah, so there, there's some concern, I think, from Betts, specifically regarding – being more hands-off on Burrow, certainly at his ADP. We talked about this on the AFC North show. Joe Burrow is going so much higher than we have him ranked and higher than we'd ever take him, so he's not going to be on any of our teams. But, Mike, I don't know if you're aware, he's like a top – he's like 12. Yeah, he's at 12. I've, I've seen that it's – that's crazy because I don't know that we saw enough from – I think Joe Burrow is going to be a great player, but I did you really see enough from him last year? Well, you saw, a did. you saw a 23-yard scrambling touchdown in week one that you're not going to see. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I saw enough to where if he finished the season healthy you would say and you're he's, coming into this next 10. year, I, I could see taking the shot on that, right? Okay. Because if he, you know, just goes to that next level and is, is next year the way that, um, you know, we, we saw from Mahomes, um, you, you've got you to pay up for the chance. But – with the knee injury and the the timeline of recovery, it's just not worth that that capital. And and with regards to Barkley, him being ready, I don't know if he's worth the risk at his ADP. He's, you know, you we we talk about the the target demands from Kenny Galladay. We talk about Daniel Jones's risk. We talk about Saquon. Um, you know, I think Jason, you made the case about Saquon on this show about maybe viewing him through a lens a little bit too rosy from the first year and a half yeah his sophomore year that was forgiven with injury if you go back to the game logs he had a long stretch of games where he was mediocre and and that and then he got injured and it was like oh he would have been great but he was injured but it's not true so we'll have to see I mean he might just be somebody you have to make a call on and whether you're willing to try for the upside Bears running back Tariq Cohen did not participate in June minicamp looked quote a bit a bit stiff Walking around with the right yeah. leg wrapped. Andy, you called this from forever ago, before the injury, I believe, that you just – you are anti-Tariq Cohen ever being good again, right? Certainly. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he was already on his way to a bit stiff without the injury. So, um, you know, he was, he was an elite special teams pass catcher that I think is on the back half of his, of his career. I think the team has tremendous trust in David Montgomery – and they brought in Damian Williams. Say, Damian Williams is is there. This if Tariq Cohen can't go, essentially, it it would be more of an uptick for David Montgomery's outlook. But Damian Williams is a solid pass catching running back too. And we'll have to see what he still. I mean, what he has. Yeah, missing a whole year, opting yeah. out, and he's older too. Uh, and then we do have a little hype train. Oh yeah. I mean, maybe it's. We were, we were already on this train when the UDK came out. 
because he's in there as a sleeper. But Jets rookie running back Michael Carter has impressed his head coach, Robert Sala. Got tremendous vision, he said. Tremendous speed and burst, the ability to make people miss. We know the situation in New York. We're going to be talking about them on today's show. They couldn't run the football. They have a very thin backfield. Yeah, but how, can we really trust Sala here? Because Michael Carter has good burst. Michael Carter does not have tremendous speed. But I, I actually completely agree with this. I think he's got amazing burst. It reminds me a lot of... But he does. I'm saying he doesn't have speed. Yes, the long speed, the the right. go, the the Neither runaway does Kareem from Hunt, your, right? Kareem Hunt has burst, not speed. Yeah, I mean it's one of those things where you're you're probably not ever going to get an 80 yard touchdown, but if you can rip off 20 yards here, 20 yards there, 20 yards, you know, then that's good enough for fantasy sometimes. When well, he's competing with Tevin Coleman, and that's great for fantasy because you want your competition weak and old. <laughs> Poor Coleman, man. He oh, no, a, is he Tevin Old Man? Oh, Tevin Old Man. Oh, well, no. Old Man. <laughs> oh. He had a he had some bad luck, bad bad injury luck, man. Well, that's what happens when you play for for the Forty ers Yeah, that's true. The luck is baked into the contract. Uh, that was today's news and notes. Brought to you as always by Sleeper. Make sure you slip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> slip on over slip to on Sleeper. Over. <laughs> <laughs> slip your phone out of the pocket and download the Sleeper app. <laughs> Why was what? that old-timey radio version? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See, yeah? Because I don't use the word slip anymore. Like, I'm going to slip into some nice jeans. <laughs> Switch your league over to the fastest-growing fantasy platform. Oh. <sighs> you guys ready to get divisional? Yep. Yeah. Let's get divisional. All right, the Bills. Let's start there. AFC East, we're breaking it down. 13-3 and three season for Buffalo last year. It was a coming out party in terms of elite production from Josh Allen. This was the number two overall team in points per game and yards. Number three in passing yards. Uh, this was a complete transition that took place. When you added Stephon Diggs and you decided you were willing to put the offense in the arm of Josh Allen, they really committed to being a pass-first team. 20th in rushing yards. Back in 2019, they had three total snaps with four or more wide receivers on the field. Fast forward to a year later, last year, Number one in terms of the most uh, per highest percentage of their plays with four more wide receivers on the field. Yeah. Led the NFL in three wide receiver sets. That's 90% of the time. And had the most first downs via pass. There was no leaning on the running game. No dependency on it. And it still worked fine, right? You ended up winning the division, a banner year. Um, and this kind of shocked everybody, right? I mean, this was... yes. Even even people who looked at this roster and Josh believed Allen in Josh Allen, was shocked. I mean, it, it, it was more. Look what I can do. <laughs> it was more than the hopes of um, it, Josh Allen truthers. It was really the uh, the highest uh, dream season that that they could have had. Now we know they're legit, right? Now we're looking at this year, saying they are the best. They are one of the best teams out there. Vegas has them as the high, the second highest win total. So they're they're legitimate. The problem I have is that they've kind of peaked to me. Well, that wasn't a problem. I th they peaked? I, Were they okay. all busted already? No, no, no. let's break that down because yeah. I, I want to be uh, – you've said that a couple times this offseason about looking at Josh Allen's season as um, the best you're going to get. Uh, this was the quarterback one, so I guess mathematically speaking, you're right about that. Uh, seven top three finishes, most among all quarterbacks. But none of that attitude would ever be put on the Kansas City Chiefs. You would never look at the Kansas City Chiefs and say, um, they hit their peak and now it's a downslope. Or they hit their peak, their peak and you're not going to get a multi-year plateau from Josh Allen. I think that's the question mark that we're really asking is, are you going to get this Josh Allen for the next five, six, seven, ten years? Yeah, right, because uh, obviously – you, to draft Patrick Mahomes costs a high round pick. To draft Josh Allen costs a high round pick. So you're saying they they need to be great. And my point in saying that Josh Allen has already hit his 
peak, his his pinnacle. Like you're just when you draft him at at his draft cost, you are he he better repeat because that's the only way he's going to be worth it is if he actually repeats. I, I'm confident Mahomes will repeat. I'm not as confident in Josh Allen. There's only been three quarterbacks ever to throw for 4,000 yards, rush for 100 times in a season. Cam Newton's rookie year, Russell Wilson in 2015, and now Josh Allen. But I which, mean, which one are you? Not confident about it. You're not confident about him repeating in the, with his arm or his legs. Uh, so I think both take a small step back. I think he's going to be a great asset for fantasy football. B top five quarterback. He's my number four quarterback. That's great. But he's being drafted. Well, he's being drafted in the fourth round. Like you could be fine. Oh man, there are you could such, you could totally be fine. There are such amazing players in the fourth round, uh, especially a wide receiver. That you know, I mean, I could get. If if I need to draft a quarterback in round ten, I'm fine. If I have to draft wide receivers in round ten or something like that, so that that's where that's where it's tough. He better be everything or more than he was last season. You have taken Kyler Murray in the fifth round yes. multiple times this off season. Correct. I'm simply making the point that look here here's the case for a repeat or better. Stephon Diggs, number one target. Right. We're not sitting here debating the merits of Emmanuel Sanders versus John Brown, just like we're not debating uh, Rondale Moore and Christian Kirk in Arizona. When, when you have DeAndre Hopkins on the field and you have Stephon Diggs on the field, you've got a baseline. Number two, you didn't do anything to – you don't need to change the identity of the team, and you didn't do anything to your backfield to, to mean that you're going to change anything with the identity. He has the legs. He has a, a division that I think is exploitable. And um, I don't know. I, I just think it's possible, and when you look at – taking Kyler in the fifth with at least a season where you saw, yes, maybe injury, but you did see some, some weeks where you were burned. You just didn't get burned with Josh Allen last year. Yeah, I, I get that. I mean, the, the round difference, you know, I'm not drafting Kyler Murray who I have ahead of Josh Allen in the fourth round. Right. So like if, if, I, I wouldn't Which is do his it there. Current ADP right now It's 401 and 409 that For I'm, I'm looking at for Allen 401 Kyler 409. It's varied a little bit. Lamar's at 503. Mike, you'd take Lamar in the fifth and Josh Allen or Kyler Murray in the fourth? Yeah. Not that you'd necessarily want to. Yeah, yeah. Any but if, if I were, yeah, those ADPs and those quarterbacks. So, so Jason, are you, I mean, I, Kyler's my number one guy, too, currently at the quarterback position. But when you're talking about Josh Allen repeating, I mean, you had, so Kyler had four rushing touchdowns his rookie season that skyrocketed all the way to 11. You just had Kyler Murray making comments about uh, him running and saying that it was, he felt like it was leaned on too much that, and that it should be, I believe the quote was saying it should be a luxury, mm -hmm. uh, his, his ability to run instead of a more of a focal point. And, but meanwhile, you have Josh Allen who has eight rushing touchdowns, nine rushing touchdowns, eight rushing touchdowns. Like, that, that's a that's, that's a guarantee. Cons that's consistent. Like you're, it would shock me if Josh Allen doesn't hit that s at least seven rushing touchdowns. Sure, I, and that makes sense. But if you're, you, you got to look at both. You got to look at both touchdowns, passing and rushing. You know that Kyler can do it rushing. Um, both guys can do it in both ways. But if you're telling me that uh, the six and a half percent touchdown percentage that Josh Allen just threw. Odds of that repeating we know are are very low. That's that's significantly above the NFL average, above good players' average. Um, you know, whereas uh, Kyler Murray, Kyler was at league about league average at four point seven percent. So I, I I think he's got room to improve. Whereas Josh Allen can absolutely repeat, but he needs to to be of a, a value. That's how I see it. All right. Okay, uh, running game, nothing new. Zach Moss, Devin Singletary back there. They they brought in Matt Breida. They talked about maybe cutting Matt Breida. That's a non-issue. Um, <laughs> Ten oh, opportunities a game for Zach Moss. If you're betting on one of these two guys, I would take my shot with Zach Moss. Yeah, that's what I. Personally, as much as I like Singletary, he is a role player. Stephon Diggs was incredible, led the NFL in targets, receptions, receiving yards, six-plus receptions in all but one game. I don't see any way that that's changing if he stays healthy. But if you're looking at a second pass-catching option, is it Sanders? Is it Gabe Davis in year two? Is it Cole Beasley? It's it's Cole Beasley. Like Beasley was a target hog last year. I mean, he saw 20% of the targets because he's the – his role on the team is 
more sure to me than what you, like Sanders. It's more important than what John Brown was doing too. Right. It, it, like uh, Gabriel Davis is going to stretch the field, but you need to have the slot wide receiver who's there. Who's going to see a whole bunch of targets. Now it rarely turns into, you know, actual fantasy points for, for Beasley. He's it's basically hot or cold. But if you're betting on a second pass catcher, that's still where I would go. Gabe Davis had 12 end zone targets last year. How is that possible? It's one more than Devontae Adams. And I know before Sand- Sanders was added, there was a lot of you know, hope and speculation for right. Gabe Davis. They still will use him. He's a deep league flyer type of player to emerge. I mean, when you throw 37 touchdowns and you're pass first, you need to have your fantasy eyeballs on a player like Gabe Davis. In case would you rather you get that emergency? Would you rather go Gabe than Emmanuel Sanders? Yeah, because where I'm drafting them, I just want to see if I have something special. Because if I have nothing special with either of these guys, I'm going to dump them for a waiver wire upside player, anyways. And you know, Sanders is on the very tail end of his career. wasn't worth the pick in New Orleans last right. season. So yeah, I, mean, I, t- I was, take that. Yeah, you're right. He he played well. He looked good. Emmanuel Sanders did. And he wasn't really worth it for fantasy. So I think he's going to be important to this offense. Good for Josh Allen. But I completely agree. If you're going to take a shot at someone in the late round, go with someone who has a high upside, and that's a breakout, which Emmanuel Sanders is great. Uh, he's not going to break out for fantasy. This no, year. he just helps the, the wide receiver rotation. The Vegas win total that Jason talked about earlier, they have them at 11, 13-3 last year. 11 is what Vegas has them for, and they start against – I mean, pretty tough schedule, honestly, to start the year for Buffalo. Pittsburgh, Miami, Washington to start the year. Ooh. So you look at three potentially really good defenses that you have to go up against, and we might know uh, – I mean, I don't know. You might be buying low for that Houston game in week four on Buffalo weapons. So and just quickly back, because we just kind of glossed on the running backs, are you drafting Zach Moss? I'm I mean, not. Um, so like currently the, the ADP I have here from sleeper is the back of the eighth round, you know, no, let, let no, me s- other running so. backs. Well, we're going to talk about them, but so Zach Moss or Michael Carter, I will, <laughs> I mean, I guess right now, this moment, I'd say Michael Carter, I would as well, Zach Moss or AJ Dillon. I'll take AJ Dillon. Okay. Yeah. It, it sucks. I mean, you're talking about two, uh, Two mediocre. Talk about run- a high-scoring team. I know two mediocre running backs behind a quarterback scores the rushing touchdown first team, and it just it feels like drafting a mediocre back behind Cam Newton in Carolina, and you're just like, or even Cam Newton this year. I say Zach Moss like, or Damian Harris. Yeah, I'll take Damian Harris. Yeah, I would. I would because I think he's a better player. Before we move on, are, are the Patriots next? No, nope. no, the Dolphins are next. We'll get to the Patriots, but before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Fight Camp. Boom, 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 pow. It's all about punching stuff Boom. and getting fit. <laughs> have you ever wanted Sons and four? <laughs> have you ever, yeah, well, there Five. You go. Have you ever wanted to learn how to box or kickbox from real fighters? Do you want to get your kids involved in a fitness journey with you while teaching them a valuable skill? Fight camp. It's made for beginners to experienced boxers who want to box from home with new content being released weekly from easy to advanced. It comes with all the gear you need. You get the the standing punching bag, you get the boxing gloves, you get quick hand wraps, and their unique punch tracking sensors. Jason, how fast are your fists? I don't know unless <laughs> I use this, but I'm sure I, if they can even, you know. Can they keep up with your fists of fury? Fist? Well, look, I mean, th- this, is, this is the deal with Fight Camp. Do you want to hit stuff and get in shape at the same time? It's really easy. And you can pay for your Fight Camp over 24 months for less than the cost of a boxing gym and get it right away. Plus, Fight Camp offers free shipping with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers to get free shipping on Fight Camp. Go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. And we want to thank IP Vanish, a great tool for online use. They are a virtual private network, a VPN which everyone should have the access to a VPN and and IP Vanish makes it so easy, so affordable. They're going to protect all your data, make sure it's encrypted, what you're reading, what you're searching, what you're watching. 
That's your business, not other people's business. You're on public Wi-Fi and you worry about, you know, passwords or other things. You don't need to as if you should. Got, as you should. You don't need to if you have the protection of a VPN. It's going to make sure that you stay secure, that you stay safe, um, and make sure that people can't block you from things, uh, you know, and, and censor things things on the internet yeah, that mind you your want. business yeah i mean it's 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 great so um i i personally have it they've got great support they're very very highly rated and they have plans starting at just three dollars 49 cents or 31 49 a year now's the time to sign up with our discount and their promotional offerings you can get 65 percent off ip vantage is the best of the best they are rated 4.7 out of 5 on trust pilot and that's with more than six thousand reviews so show them some love the repeat sponsors remember it's ip vanish dot com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online today. All right, let's talk about the Miami Dolphins. Surprising 2020 season. There are some stats I want to point out to you guys that I think might blow your mind about this team. They went 10 and six last year. Um, they had Vegas had them at six wins, so they absolutely blew away expectations. Yep. They covered the spread in 70% of their games. Um, it was an impressive year. Vegas has them up at nine. For the mm. upcoming season, uh, they only had one of their wins last season against a team with a winning record. You know they don't control mm. kind of their schedule and how that worked out, but that was just the case. And they created a ton of turnovers. They won the turnover battle. That was a big part of their team. They were not a great offensive team. That's why they let go of Chan Gailey as offensive coordinator, and that's why they went out and pursued some real weapons in the passing game that go beyond. Uh, Devontae Parker, they added Will Fuller. They drafted uh, Jalen Waddle. Waddle. Yeah, and, and Devontae Parker is still there. The The one thing I want to say, because I want to talk about the offensive side of the ball right now and, and see where you, I guess, range of outcomes might be. Tua gets a lot of crap because it wasn't very impressive on film. Now, the team went 6-3 and three in his starts. There's, all, there's a resentment that flies towards Tua simply because Ryan Fitzpatrick was benched to put Tua in place, and it just wasn't very fun to watch. But the one stat that kind of blew my mind was 10%, which is not a lot, 10% of Tua's attempts were 20-plus yards downfield. And you say, well, that's not great. Ryan Fitzpatrick had 7.9% of his attempts downfield. The great flame it's thrower. Because he's, he's smart. He knew, what he, was, knew who he had on the field. And this is why Chan Gailey is gone, is my point. Is This was a, a conservative offense that relied on that defensive turnover uh, differential. And now Tua gets the reins, Fitzpatrick's in Washington, but he has actual damn field weapons that have come through. Will Fuller, you know, at the top of that list, number one in yards per target. And there's a lot of talk about them going to a more explosive offense, take more chances, put two in a position to make more plays with the offensive side of the ball. So I guess I, I look at this as a team that people are grimacing at, but I think that there's some real opportunity there. And I, I wonder, Mike, where you fit into that, um, how you break it down. I mean, it's we've talked about it before, but this it, if Tua is bad this year, it's because Tua is not a franchise quarterback. You have The team has done an incredible job of surrounding – him with playmakers. I mean, and, and even Mike Kosicki is still there. He's uh, not like burning down the house as one of the best tight ends in the league, but he's still a good offensive player. I I struggle with two one because I didn't really like what I saw when I when you were watching him. But for fantasy purposes, I mean, you no, know, yeah, he's winning. But you have what? You have one one QB one game for for Tua and that includes the final week of uh of the NFL season when they got shellacked by the Buffalo Bills and Tua threw the ball 58 times he threw the ball Whoa. 58 times and couldn't even get into the into the top 15 as a fantasy quarterback that is absolutely absurd now it's it's rookie Tua yes he he can improve and get better but will this team while while they're going to prioritize the downfield Will they really? Will they keep their foot on the gas like it feels like the Buffalo Bills did uh, against teams where they're we're going to spread it out and we're going to keep throwing? But once they get that lead, if they connect on the one deep shot, do they keep going from there? Because their defense is 
incredible, and that's how they're really going to win the games. They also added Hunter Long, who was the uh, reception leader at the tight end position at the collegiate level, added him in the third round, Mike Asicki on the contract year. Yeah, I mean, you, you summed it up. I mean, Jason, I know you are not a Tua fan. I do wonder if we're spoiled with, you know, the year one explosive type of performances that we got from Justin Herbert or Kyler in recent years, and we didn't see that from Tua. Yeah, and I mean, we didn't see weapons on that team either. Yeah, it's it's this year will be telling, and this is a team where you have to call your shot. Um, when I look at the Dolphins' outlook, it's scary to me because I'm fully OUT. I'm out on Waddle. I'm out on Fuller because of Tua. I'm out on Tua. I'm out on Gasicki. I'm out on Miles Gaskin, who's probably the uh, the the funnest uh, player to talk about for fans. I'm out. I just don't believe in this offense. But more than any team out there, um, I feel like they could make me eat crow. Uh, because there is a... I see you've written the word crow down oh. on, on a piece of paper. <laughs> I did. Be Why did you write it down? I don't... Want when, I, when we got to the Dolphins, I just saw... Look, I, I see the path. If the Tua is good, if Tua is good, then this offense is going to be gr just, I mean, awesome. You Your value you're getting in the drafts. If you want to take your shot say, at your Will out Fuller... Is, is why I'm in. Your out is why I'm in because of the draft spot of exactly. getting... Fuller as the wide receiver, 37, or Waddle at 42. No one wants to talk about Jalen Waddle. They want to talk about Devontae Smith and yeah. um, and Jamar Chase, for, and I get it. But, that I mean, you could be stealing. You could absolutely be stealing, or you could be lighting picks on fire. I think it will be that. But they're it's low all picks. a matter of – well, they're not all low picks. Like, for instance, Miles Gaskin. He's the only one. He's, he's a fifth-round pick. He could be great um, or – uh, I I believe you know. Last Are you year, out on Miles Gaskin? Is he in that category? I'm 100 percent out on Miles Gaskin. Miles Gaskin touched the ball almost 18 times per game. Yeah, and that was with Chan Gailey, a completely different offensive coordinator. They went out and made that's a fair. priority to bring in uh, Malcolm Brown, who they talk up and they say he's a vet, and that's part of why they didn't draft a running back. So I don't think this is last year's usage of Miles Gaskin. Now he is an excellent pass catcher so he'll catch the ball and be good enough for fantasy from time to time uh, just in PPR leagues but I don't believe he will be a bell cow he's not built to be and I don't think that the same coaching uh, you know offensive staff is here so um, it's really Tua man it's just if he can get it done and take that leap the Dolphins will be an awesome team I know we brought it up Earlier in the offseason, it's hype train, but ESPN's Cameron Wolf reporting that they're prioritizing the downfield passing game um, in offseason practices. Last year, they were right in the middle of the road, 15th in points per game, 16th in rushing attempts. They want to take a step forward on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, and so, you know, Mike, what how, what are your feelings like hot, cold on Mike Gesicki himself? He was tied for the most end zone targets. It is with, It was with Chan Gailey. He is in a contract year. But um, yeah, I mean, when, are you taking when, a shot in the ninth round on Mike Gesicki? Like when Tua keeps missing him in the end zone, you keep piling up stats. It's like when you miss a shot in basketball. Oh, you, you I'm, pile padding, up. I'm padding up my O boards here. So your your target stats go up when they're not yes. caught. Yeah, I mean, he had a three game stretch here, uh, weeks twelve through fourteen, where he was a top ten guy each of those weeks. He had five touchdowns in that span. He looked he looked solid. I think that Mike Gesicki is. He's fine. Uh, it's it's very hard to see a world where Mike Gesicki takes that leap to be truly a difference-making fantasy tight end when you have Waddle and Fuller and and Parker is still there. It, uh, like the you know I, I'm not going to hype up Troutman again, but the the point of why I like that situation is because he can become the the number two skill position player on the team. It 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 it's in the range of outcomes where. For Mike Gesicki, that you're it's going to be touchdown or bust, and I'm not drafting a touchdown or bust uh, tight end whose quarterback is Tua. Tua was on a 4,100-yard pace over the last five weeks, 17 touchdowns, 17 interceptions, throwing the ball like crazy in that stretch, although, like you said, very low uh, yards per attempt down at 6.3. And 3.8% of his attempts – Turned into a touchdown. Like that's way under the league average. So maybe he's gonna yeah. That's regress of up to the mean. Grant. Yeah, I mean, really, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's you you give. It's like Philadelphia, right? 
where you, you're trying to figure out chicken or egg with yeah with Carson Wentz at some point in time where you're going, man, uh, uh, who's he going to throw to? Yeah, and and you have to also factor in that he was a rookie. Like rookies don't throw touchdowns at a, at a great rate outside of Justin Herbert, pretty much. Right. You know, it's like um, that that's a that's a difficult portion of the field for a rookie to come in and once you get into the the shorter uh defenses right. it's it's tough to throw touchdowns rookie year like i said vegas win total at nine tough start to the year at new england buffalo the patriots let's move on let's talk about the seven and nine new england patriots the brady list patriots uh the last time that they were under 500 was the year 2000 oh y2k watch out yeah. Shut your computers down, everybody. What did you guys do for Y2K? Were you worried about it? No. I was excited about it. I want, You I, wanted to see some mayhem? I did. I really wanted to see. I just wanted to. I mean, I was a kid for the most part, and I just wanted to wake up and have some kind of financial system collapse. My of mom was so afraid. Some men just want to watch the world burn. She was so afraid. Like oh, right no. when the clock went over, it was like, everybody get down. Did you You're get telling it? me you weren't disappointed? When it rolled over and absolutely nothing Not happened. Not disappointed. Really? It's just me. You were you were disappointed. I was. That I, the world it, didn't collapse. Not well. Like I didn't want you know full anarchy, but I wanted something to happen. It was like it was like waiting for waiting for something, and then it's like oh, just just kidding. There was there was no surprise birthday party. That reminds me of the he was sixteen. Like the, or how old were you? Even older than that, probably. No, uh, about that. I don't. What I, you, we can't do that math. But in, seems like easy math. But oh, okay. I was I was eighteen. Okay, there you go. But in uh, the Die Hard that had Justin Long in it. And they called it the fire sale, which is like, like all the hackers. We're going to shut everything down. We're going to shut down all the systems. Yeah, man. And then it actually happens. And you realize, oh, I did not want this to happen because I like living. Now, I'm just I'm just sharing this piece of information. I didn't invent it. So oh, this don't is get a great, mad at me. Great stat. But back in 2000, not only were you 18, mm -hmm. but you at that time weighed the same as Tutu Atwell does today. Oh. Fantastic. Which right now, present day Jason weighs one point eight four tutus. I, I think we should start. <laughs> I think this we should have a movement. You know, we got stones over the sea. You got pounds here. Right. We should go tutus. Okay, so you're at one. I am one point eight four tutus. And do you I refuse to believe you were a you were a one sixty five when you were eighteen. No, I was not one sixty five okay. at eighteen. I knew this stat was egregious. How many tutus would you like to weigh? <laughs> like, if you work hard, how many you go into one point five tutus? Uh, so you're two telling two, me is a two two two. He's how much? He's one one sixty five. Uh, I would like to weigh one point two one tutus. <laughs> so I've got point six tutus to lose. Oh my goodness! All right, the Patriots last year not good. Look, instead of tutu, it's toot toot because I was out on New England last year. Well done. Thank you. I really liked going from two two to two two. Yeah. You, thank you. Three and four in one score games. Two and six on the road. Cam Newton was a disaster for the most part. Uh, they could run the football. They couldn't pass it. They had 180 fewer pass attempts than in 2019, which to me is like almost a, you know, it, it's just a exclamation point on losing Brady. Right? It's you lose him and then you can't even pass. You can't even try to pass. Right? 180 fewer attempts uh the, the only time that you saw a bigger adjustment or change year to year was when the mason rudolph and uh, oh. duck, duck hodges experience oh, happened to pittsburgh so that's the bad right and and you could say well everything went wrong for the patriots and they were seven and nine that's like, what i was going to say yeah i'm, I'm i have no <laughs> doubt you're going to apologize for the patriots no right? no not not apologize at all just say if if your quarterback was a disaster and your team had several defensive starters opt out for COVID and you go seven and nine, thing, things are going to be okay in 2021. If your quarterback stays as bad, this team is so much better than last year. Yeah. Just from the free agent acquisitions they made this offseason paired with all the COVID players back. That's another thing when we're talking Dolphins is they've got two games against the Patriots that I expect to be a, a tip-top defense this year uh, with those additions back on the team. So you but both have a rosier outlook. I mean, look, they added Hunter Henry, Johnny Smith, Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne. They drafted Mac Jones. They drafted Ramondre Stevenson. I think we have a rosier outlook on the real life real life yes. Patriots. Their win total, their 
playoff berth chances. Ooh. Yeah. You going to get some booty scooting this but year? I, you I have no rosy outlook what, on the fantasy. Andy, you were, you were, no fantasy roses? You were telling us a quote that that uh, neither Jason or I had heard about uh, from Cam Newton. Yeah, there. I mean, there was just some uh, – the video that came out, he was chilling in the back of a car talking about getting right physically and how when he threw – he threw an interception in Carolina on the one-yard line, chased down the uh, – well, tried to make the tackle. I don't think he did. Ended up hurting his shoulder, and he basically said from that point on, he's had a problem with that shoulder. We know about the shoulder issues. We know about the throwing motion. We know how right. ugly it's been. He claims that he couldn't lead with that shoulder on any rushing attempts, where obviously last year he still scored 12 rushing touchdowns, but he only averaged 177 passing yards a game. And I don't know how long the rope is, right? Like, I don't, I don't know how much narrative street to read into that. Obviously, the confidence level of Bill Belichick and Cam Newton extends to the 15th pick in the draft, right? Like, it's not enough to, to go use that on another key component to your team you need to go out there and you reinforce well, your at least quarterback long room long term but yeah i mean it's really hard because there's so many times when these quarterbacks start to take a the walk off the cliff production wise and we want to believe that they can get it back right but carolina didn't believe he had it or was going to get it back they last look year's, like geniuses right now yeah last year's play on the field doesn't look like he's got it or going to get it back so as a fantasy player I sure as heck am not going to bet my team on him getting it back. That being said, I mean, this is the he is an undrafted quarterback. And he was, like, for the first half of the season, I mean, he he was a very, a very startable quarterback. Yeah, when you run the football on the goal line, not only do you delete the value of the running backs yeah. in that room, but you put yourself in a position, I mean, yeah, the first, you know, 10 weeks of the year, 17-game pace, he would have been – you know, 700 yards rushing and 19 rushing touchdowns. So that's asinine. Like, that's not correct. That's sustainable, not but that shows you he was still valuable because of that. But he looked really, really bad in the passing game. And it's a matter of, can this team win that way? If you're winning games, nobody cares, right? You're not going to care if Cam Newton's a 200-yard passer if you're winning ball games. But if you aren't, are you going to get Mac Jones? How will that impact Hunter Henry, Johnny Smith, and company? And is there any diamonds in the rough here in terms of fantasy value? I don't I don't think there are pass catching diamonds in the rough here. Either way, you have a rookie Mac Jones, um, with a good defense, a good coach that I think is gonna really try to game manage this team to wins. Um, or you have Cam Newton not throwing the ball a ton. So when it comes to Nelson Aguilar, who maybe he would be the pick, it could be Jacoby Myers. Um, it could be Hunter Henry or Jonu Smith. Um, th there's no, there's no telling who it's going to be, and then what you're going to get from a small projected passing yardage team is not something I want to play around with at all. The running game is the big curiosity. Um, like you said, Cam Newton's going to vulture the touchdowns on the goal line, but if the change happens to Mac Jones, now you're probably going to get uh, more opportunities for touchdowns. Um, probably about the same amount of dump-offs. If you want to look at what made Justin Herbert great as a rookie quarterback compared to what could be in store for Mac Jones is you had a bad offensive line in Los Angeles. You had a defense that couldn't stop anybody, and you had to lean on him. This is not a situation where – you had Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and yeah. <laughs> great weapons. Yeah, and, and in this situation you have a great offensive line you have a rush first type of team, a great defense. So you may try to put him in a position where you're not risking too much. Uh, I will say to your Jacoby Myers point, if you're looking at a best ball flyer, late round flyer, you know, out of Boston, Tom Curran said he'd put his cash on Jacoby Myers being the most reliable and productive receiver. Jacoby Myers, once he became an actual starter for this team, which was week seven, he was averaging – five receptions and 65 yards a game. He simply did not score ever ever. And that I which mean, was the Patriot motto last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well no, they just scored rushing touchdowns, but Cam Newton was on a no passing touchdown policy for the majority of the year. But 
27th in points per game, though. That was rough. Five for 65 is not nothing. And uh, from week seven on, ninety for eleven fifteen was the pace. Yeah, it, exactly. On a seventeen. And again, game. let me let me illustrate. Okay. No touchdowns. Yes, and that that's why no one not not specifically the only reason. I mean, Nelson Aguilar and all these free agents coming in that is scary for if you're going to try and draft Jacoby Myers. But, okay, but simply pointing out that. The guy had a lot of production. Let me just put you didn't on the have spot. fantasy points. Let me put you on the spot here because easy. You you you're not excited about Miami. Correct. You're you're not excited about New England. Correct. So if you had to bet on one of these teams making you eat crawl more, you're betting on Miami for fantasy purposes. Yes, I'm, I'm betting on Miami. Yes, I think that they have. Um, the potential they want to air it out they want to be a high volume high powered right. offense I think the Patriots love their defense they go out and they sign two tight ends they want to run it down your throat and control the game that's not for fantasy all right let's talk about the Jets two and 14 last year it's over guys it's over 722 oh. days congratulations New York of septic sludge in New York City, you made it. The Adam Gaze. I mean, era. You, you started it. To be fair, like yeah, we all knew this before you signed him. <laughs> I'm talking to the city oh. like it's their We're fault. We're flushing it away. It's over. 722 days of Adam Gaze. Yeah, you, take, you need a big flush. It's a long flush. It sounds. Yeah, you gotta you gotta do that thing where you hold the lever up mm -hmm. just to make sure that more water's coming through. Two cycles of water. Yeah, clear it out. Um. Uh, <laughs> Oh, man. Every single New York Jets game last year started with a Vegas total below 50. That's the only team to ever accomplish that. Their average team implied point total was 17.9. They were 32nd in the league in points per game. They were a disaster on offense. Nowhere to go but up, right? We spend the offseason. We go out. We get Corey Davis. We go get Tevin Coleman, Keelan Cole. You draft Michael Carter. You draft Elijah Moore. You bring in Zach Wilson to be your new quarterback, and you don't do the dance and song that Jacksonville is doing with its quarterback. The dance and song? Yeah. I put it's it in usually a, the song I put the it dance. in a different order. <laughs> You're not doing the Jacksonville dance and song. Oh, man. Which sounds way weirder. It sounds super weird. <laughs> like, it shouldn't be that big a deal. You're saying right. the same words, but... The dance and song is not a thing. <laughs> but you're not you're not pretending like Zach Wilson's not your quarterback for the year or has to prove himself. So this division's rough. Yeah. Fantasy wise. Let me just illustrate this. I realized I, I realized coming into today that I was gonna be negative Nancy. I don't like any of these teams' outlooks for fan it's Stefan Diggs. Is so weird. Stephon Diggs is my favorite like player for fantasy in this whole division and outside of yeah, that you like, pooped on Allen a little bit Michael Carter okay yeah I mean Michael Carter is a sleeper running back drafted at RB 40 um hard to expect Zach uh, Zach Wilson to come in with a terribly ranked offensive line that could improve but that's it takes time and if you watch the Zach Wilson's like his highlights back from uh uh from college, he had elite offensive play where he was able to stand there. I'm not not doubting the talent, the offensive arm, line play. Yeah, the, I'm not doubting the 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 arm talent of Zach Wilson, but his old line was really helping him out back then. And the New York Jets offensive line is not going to do that. I agree. Now, he's he's mobile. He can move around and things like that. But this is he's going to be in for a very rude awakening in week one. It's amazing the turnover at the wide receiver position for this division outside of Buffalo. I mean, you can even include Buffalo with losing John Brown, but every other team has a pretty much remade offensive wide receiving room. I mean, Corey Davis, Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore I love. I mean, coming into the league, you have Crowder still, Denzel Mims as well, but the wide receiver course throughout the division have been completely revamped, rebuilt, Davis coming off of the 65 for 984 and 5 got paid. Um, probably the last wide receiver one you can draft in your fantasy drafts. Probably, yeah. Uh, Corey Davis or Will Fuller? Who are you taking a shot on? Will Fuller. You're going Will Fuller? Ooh, that's tough. I, I, I know the targets are going to be there for, for Davis. Me. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go Will Fuller just because of the talent and the speed. He, you know, he, he's always been good when he's on the field. But I do. Uh, are you ready for the breakout for Chris Herndon? 
<laughs> oh. No. Oh. Sorry, you were speaking about the wide receivers. You yeah, do I mean, believe is what you said. Um. Uh, yeah, I do. I do believe Corey Davis is a value for where he's going. He's basically undrafted. If you're in super super deep leagues, he's not going to be relevant. I think in most you know standard leagues where you've got you know four or five or six people on the bench and one flex but if you're in a deeper league multiple flex large benches um you're in a dynasty league I think Corey Davis will uh, be valuable they they brought him in they paid him a lot of money the question is going to become is he the one which you know he was drafted to be a one and he was never really a one on the NFL right. field and now they brought in Elijah Moore is it possible Elijah Moore can supplant him in year one? Would you rather draft Elijah Moore at wide receiver 58 or Corey Davis at wide receiver 45? You have to hold more and hope you see a breakout. Corey Davis. Would you rather draft Corey Davis or Nelson Aguilar as a late-round flyer with upside? Oh, Corey Davis. That's where I'm at. <sighs> yeah, it's pr it's probably Corey Davis. but Mike, I mean, would you is, take a – sorry, go ahead. Just, you're betting on a rookie quarterback on a terrible team. Mike, would you like to eat um, a glass of uh, expired glass? milk? Yes, uh, you got to you got to eat the glass of expired milk or a oh, two day man. old fish left out of the refrigerator. You got to pick one. Oh, not refrigerated. Correct. Okay, uh, then you got to go with the milk. Okay, is that the decision you're making here? <laughs> it's just one of yeah. I mean, it's like okay. Let me give you a different one. Okay, um, Tevin Coleman late. Is there any chance he has a starting job and we're overlooking him? I'll take the milk. <laughs> I I think so. I'm Michael Carter in the ninth round is fine. Like that, he, the, he he truly does have a three down skill set. Unfortunately, he was a fourth round rookie, and we know that that does not often translate to fantasy success, especially as in their first year. Uh, it, my concern with Michael Carter is by August. He's going to be like a sixth round pick. I, th I think that people are going to start picking up on him and it's going to be a problem and, and he's going to be way overdrafted. Yeah, I, a little bit of what we see out of camp and those reports are going to move players like Michael yes. Carter in extreme ways. Yes. And that's when you start to get you, that's when you start to get to the original question of do I want a running back in New York? Yeah, yes. Right. 100 percent. Yes. <laughs> Instead of just like, OK, we hope that this is a steal. All right. Some wrap up questions for the division. Who wins it? This is one I think we're all going to agree on. Jets. <laughs> nah, it's, yeah, it's, it's Buffalo. Buffalo. I think Miami could push, but if if I'm betting, I'm going on Buffalo. Toughest player in the division to project. Ooh, uh, I think it's Will Fuller because he has the most potential impact for your team. Yeah, it's Tua would be my answer. Sure. Uh, and for me, it's Cam Newton. Sure. Because uh, I, I think he's a really valuable fantasy asset if he's the starter. And while he's the starter, you just don't know. I – believe cam newton will start it, it presuming health cam newton will be the starter for the entire year if that's the case then that's you can get him after your draft yeah and you can the he'll hard, be fine for fantasy okay just to tease that out just for one extra second though that means you think that they're going to be better than miami and buffalo better how better record wise that, yeah, maybe because if they're if they're fighting third, fourth into the division, that's when I think it's hard not to give Mac Jones some time. It's it just the 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 system of the Patriots being so difficult for these guys to learn. It can I there I know a lot has been made out of of uh, Mac Jones being uh, you know intelligent quarterback and be able to pick these things up quickly, but it's a big jump going from. Alabama to the Bill Belichick offense. I know we're in the business of declaring things way too early, but I, I honestly, I just don't know who's going to start there. I, I think that they're in the beginning of the off season. I thought it would be Mac Jones for sure. I've definitely softened on that, but um, I mean, it's not like, it's not like Cam Newton showed us. He learned it. So <laughs> well, I mean, he ran his own version. Yeah. Which was, I, I run the ball. I just don't, I, I think we have a very bitter bill. We've got a bitter bill in New England, and I think bitter bill leads to crazy off season where you sign everybody that you cast your eyes on, yeah. and it lands to fastest change possible if you don't see like what you see. So if if the last thing he wants to do is go through Cam again, if Cam's last year's Cam, he doesn't want to repeat last year. So I think that that's when you can get quick trigger. It's really ironic, right? Because part of whether 
Cam makes that change is how you're doing in the division. Are you on track for the playoffs? Week one is Miami. And that's if Cam Oof. is starting week one, that oh, is man. a that is really a good uh, barometer test. And so if the Patriots come out and beat Miami and now they're ahead of them with a game head to head win in division, that pr that projects probably more than what feels like one single game towards Cam starting a while. Going to be a tough first four, though. I mean, you get to play New York the week following Miami, but then you got New Orleans and Tampa. So it should be an interesting first four games. Uh, sneaky player in the division. I'll throw Jalen Waddell out there as a sneaky ad. I'm going to say Gabriel Davis. Okay. Mike, would, you got anybody? Jamison Crowder. Oh, all Just, right. I mean, Quarterback's friend. Yeah, a, a scared quarterback who's having to run around Thrown to thrown short to the guy who's in the slot. <sighs> yeah, not to Herndon, that's for sure. No, well, Herndon, Herndon's going to lose his job to to a, a flash from the past here, Tyler Croft, yeah, the probably. Tomb Raider. Yeah. All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting today's episode. Jason, you can grab an Odell Beckham Jr. signed Cleveland Browns jersey. 40 bucks right now, ends on Wednesday. Maybe I'm the one selling it. I'm just kidding. You're the one buying the CeeDee Lamb signed Ooh. NFL game ball. Yes, I am. 20 bucks right now. Ends on Wednesday. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLER. The that, BALLERS. That Ballers. Did I say BALLER? <laughs> you did. It's BALLERS. A, you hit them with the old Ballers. dancing song right there. Yeah, I don't want to do that dancing song. When you sign up, if you use the code BALLER, you get $1 to, towards your purchase. If you use the code BALLERS, you get, you $10. get 10 So just use BALLERS. What's great is that we were already – I think we were all destroyed for um, – what do we do? Paper, rock, scissors? But we said yeah, rock, that, paper, scissors. Yeah. And people have a hard time with the wrong order. So, like, yeah. dance and song It's going to set the world on fire <laughs> yeah, here soon. Better not check Twitter. That'll do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Remember, if you want tickets to the Phoenix show, head to ballerslive.com right now and get them before they're gone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.